In this video, we will show that the invertible upper triangular matrices of the general linear group of dimension 2 over the real numbers can be expressed as an internal semi-direct product of two distinguished subgroups. We will not review the general theory of semi-direct products in this video. If you would like a quick summary of this, please see the beginning of the previous part, and if you'd like a more in-depth description of semi-direct products, please see part one. So let's jump in. The general linear group of dimension two over the real numbers is defined as the set of two by two real matrices A such that the determinant of A is non-zero. This is equivalent to the following set. It's the set of two by two real matrices with entries A, B, C and D as follows, such that AD minus BC is non-zero. If a two by two real matrix belongs to GL2R, we say the matrix is invertible. We consider the following three subsets of GL2R. The subset T consisting of all of the so-called upper triangular matrices. These are the two by two real matrices that are invertible and that have a zero in the bottom left entry. We then consider the subset U of T consisting of all of the upper triangular matrices that have ones along the main diagonal and we consider the subset D of T consisting of all of the invertible diagonal 2x2 two two real matrices. In this video we will establish the following claim. We will show that the subset T is a subgroup of GL2R and we will show that T is an internal semi-direct product of U and D. Recall that this will mean showing that U is a normal subgroup in T, D is a subgroup of T, the intersection of U and D is trivial, and T equals UD. The proof of this claim will be in two halves. In the first half, we will show that T is a subgroup of GL2R, that D is a subgroup of T, and that the intersection of U and D is equal to the two by two identity matrix. This is the identity element in the group GL2R. First note that both D and T are non-empty because the two by two identity matrix belongs to both D and T. Now the intersection of U and D is simply equal to the set consisting of this two by two identity matrix. This is because it's this is the only matrix of T where the entries A and D are both 1 and B equals 0. This is a requirement for a matrix to be in the set U, and this is a requirement for a matrix to be in the set D. Now, we will make note of an important identity. For any six real numbers, we have that the product of the following not necessarily invertible upper triangular matrices gives us the following upper triangular matrix. And this identity will be denoted by star. Now, note that by star we have that T is closed under matrix multiplication. This is because if A, D, A prime, D prime are all non-zero, then it follows that A, multiplied by a prime is non-zero, as is d, d prime. And therefore, this matrix belongs to T, by definition. We also have, by star, that D is closed under matrix multiplication. These matrices belong to D if and only if the entries B and B prime are both equal to zero. And in this case, if we take the product of the two resulting matrices, we note that here we're going to have that this top right entry will also be zero because by assumption we've got that B prime and B are both zero. And it follows that this matrix will then belong to D. To conclude that T is a subgroup of GL2R and D is a subgroup of T, it remains to show that for an arbitrary matrix of T, its inverse belongs to T and likewise for D. So let A, the following matrix, be an arbitrary 
element of T, A inverse is given by the following matrix, where we note here that because A and D are non-zero, it follows that their inverses exist and are also non-zero. So this matrix belongs to T, and we've established that T is a subgroup of GL2R. It also follows that D is a subgroup of T, because if we set B equal to 0 here, then this is an arbitrary element of D, and its inverse will have a 0 entry here, because B is 0, and therefore its inverse is going to belong to D as well. Now, for the second half, it remains to show that U is a normal subgroup of T, and that T equals UD. We consider the following map from T into D, sending this matrix of T to this matrix of D. We note that phi is a group homomorphism. Given two arbitrary matrices in T, if we apply phi to their product, that's the same as applying phi to this matrix by star. And then the image of this matrix under phi is given by the following diagonal matrix. Now, if we consider instead phi applied to this matrix and its product with phi applied to this matrix, we get that this is equal to the product of the following two diagonal matrices, which just gives us this matrix. And as these matrices are the same, this establishes that phi is a group homomorphism. Now, the kernel of phi is equal to u because a matrix in T is in the kernel of phi if and only if its image under this map is the two by two identity matrix. But this holds if and only if the entries A and D are equal to one. And this set of matrices is the set U. We now recall the following two facts from general group theory. If phi from G to H is a group homomorphism, then the kernel of phi is a normal subgroup of G. And if X and Y are elements of G and phi X equals phi Y, then this holds if and only if X Y inverse belongs to the kernel of phi. And this statement holds if and only if X is in the right coset of the kernel of phi, kernel of phi y. We can then apply these two facts to the situation above. We get from fact one that u is a normal subgroup of t. And if we now let a be the following arbitrary matrix of t, and we let b be the following diagonal matrix in d, then we have from this map phi that 5a is equal to 5b, which is equal to b. Now we can apply fact 2 to conclude that the matrix A belongs to the right coset UB of the subgroup U. Now, as A was an arbitrary element of T, and as B belongs to D, we have that T is contained in UD. Finally, we have that UD is contained in T because U and D are both contained in T and T is closed under matrix multiplication. So the product of a matrix in U and a matrix in D will certainly belong to T. Therefore, T is equal to UD and we've satisfied all the requirements of an internal semi-direct product. So T is equal to the semi-direct product of U and D. In the next part, we will show how this generalizes for matrices of arbitrary dimension over an arbitrary field.